So this is the intersection of Parklawn and Krausvik in Harlem in the Netherlands. And this is a pretty unique intersection that's one of the more efficient ones in the city. It's a meeting point of two completely different modes of transportation. One is primarily cycling-centered, and the other is primarily car-centered. One of the routes leads directly from the center of town to the main train station, and the other shuttles car traffic locally. And this is all managed by the traffic control system we're seeing here, move the lights from red to green. So I'm going to study this intersection with you guys and try to figure out what did the city of Harlem do really, really well, and what are some things that they could do better for the future. A bird's eye perspective gives us an interesting point of view of this intersection. So running from east to west, we have this park lawn, which is a road that shuttles car traffic from the western part of the city all the way to the eastern part of the city. And an important part of this observation is that this is only going to be servicing car traffic within the city limits of Harlem. You're not going to be seeing car traffic from a completely different city using Park Lawn to get to a, another city like Amsterdam. So the car traffic on Park Lawn is all local, whereas the traffic on Krausweg is going to be very pedestrian and bike heavy. And that's because Krausweg connects Harlem train station, the main one, directly to the center of the town. So many people will be beginning their trips by cycling or walking to the train station and then going to a different city, or they'll be ending their train trip and then walking or cycling home. You can really see the differences when you are dropped at ground level. So this is Park Lawn, and on the left side we have a bus lane that has priority at the intersection. Only buses are allowed to use it. And the lane just over on the left is for cars. So it's two lanes on the left. And on the right side, it's one lane uh, for cars going in the other direction. You do have a painted bicycle lane on either side of the road as well, but you can definitely see that the priority here is the relatively quick movement of cars across the town of Harlem. And it doesn't take too long walking down the street of Krausweg to see that its main priority is the movement of pedestrians and cyclists. So this is right by the main train station in Harlem, and this is just a sped up walkthrough of what walking from the main train station to the downtown looks like. So this is approaching the intersection of Krausweg and Parkland. And the street is lined with shops, businesses, and residential units on the top. We have lots of cyclists, people with strollers, and lots of pedestrians here. And this is taking at around 5 o'clock, so this is typical rush hour in Harlem. And when the street ends, it splits into three. So one street that goes to the right, another street that goes straight down the middle that's lined with local shops and businesses. And then there's also one that reaches around on the left side, and that's the primarily bicycle route for getting to the center. So how does the intersection of these very two different transportation modes get handled? It gets handled by the traffic control system that moves the phases from red to green for the different travel directions. And you have two main kinds of systems in the world. You have smart systems and dumb systems. The dumb systems just give a pre-designated amount of green, yellow, and red time based on traffic count data in the past. But the smart systems, the smart systems can detect and measure how intense the traffic is in each direction, and then it can adjust the timing for each travel mode. So for example, if there are a large number of cyclists, the signal is supposed to be able to detect that and then give priority and extra green time for the cyclists. With it also being true that if a bus approaches, the bus will immediately get a green because the idea is that buses carry the most number of people. So it's more efficient to let the bus go quickly instead of having it wait behind a long row of cars. And the smart traffic signals is exactly what this intersection here has at Park Lawn and Krausweg. So right after requesting a green, you can see that the two cyclists here received a green right away. But it doesn't stand green for too long because it's detected that cyclists only need a few seconds to cross. So after getting the green, it'll quickly change back to red to keep the 
cross the road open for cars or there's another car that approaches. So the idea is that it helps cyclists get through more quickly and they don't have to wait a very, very long time for cross car traffic to get across. So this can help the intersection be much more efficient. The intersection also has special equipment that can detect buses from a fair distance away. So whenever a bus approaches, the signal will then quickly change from green for the different modes to red, and then it'll give the bus the priority right of way. Reason here being that if the bus has the most number of people, you don't want those people being stuck in traffic for longer than they have to. These kind of setups are one reason why Dutch intersections are so monstrously efficient. Because instead of having to spend millions of dollars to add extra capacity by building new lanes, they just had to adjust the signal timing and make it more flexible. And we ended up doing our own traffic count on this intersection, and I'm going to show it to you guys in a second. We ended up speeding it up by 16 times just so you can get a sped up idea of how the traffic flows and how much time is dedicated to each phase and how the signal itself adjusts based on the ground conditions here. One of the things that stuck out the most to me is that we calculated that the average bus time to come through here was at least once every minute. So the average time between buses was around 45 to 50 seconds, which blows my mind as an American. And we ended up projecting some traffic totals. So we had a total of 772 pedestrians, 748 cyclists, 92 buses, and just 288 cars. In fact, it's really interesting that you have so many more pedestrians and cyclists compared to cars. And if you calculate the ratio between the bike's ped going north versus the cars traveling east and west, you'll find that on this intersection at rush hour, almost you have five times the amount of bike peds traveling between the train station and the center compared to the actual car traffic. And this raises some really interesting questions about the signal setup. Is this current system optimized like it's currently functioning? Is it really efficient to give bikes and peds, which are five times more numerous, just a couple seconds of crossing time before immediately going back to red just to try to clear more space for cars? Does it make sense to you that 15 to 20 cyclists will have to wait 20 to 30 seconds for the signal to turn green when we want people to have the priority here so people take the train more? Do we really want to add that extra barrier to get into the train station if we're slowing them down with cars? So even though this traffic signal is already a lot more efficient than what I'm used to, there's still always room for improvement and they could implement what we call a continuous screen for cyclists here. So the concept is that as a cyclist approaches here, this signal is already green. The, the walking signal is green, the cycling signal is green, and instead of having to come to a stop and then push a button, the cyclist can just continue through completely unobstructed. And this is how it would be for 90% of the time in both directions. Cyclists would come, the light's already green, and they don't have to stop. We have a continuous and smooth flow of bicycle traffic going from the Harlem downtown to the train station and vice versa. Now the kicker is that for a continuous green system, how it would work is that it's always green until a car approaches. So because we want to prioritize cyclists and pedestrians walking to the train station over local car traffic, a car would have to drive up and this light would always be red. So the car drives up, stops at the stop bar, and they wait, say, 20 to 30 seconds. Then this light would turn green and then finally the, the walking pedestrian signal would turn red. So what we're doing is that we're creating a more close connection between these two parts of the city and making it a lot easier to access the train station and a lot faster. But you could also add an exception to the system. You can still keep the current equipment that allows the signal to turn green right away for buses. So you could still prioritize the buses, but you can adjust the priority to reflect the fact that this is such a vital corridor in Harlem for cycling and for pedestrians. This idea still isn't very popular in most cities around the world, but in the Netherlands, it's starting to be trialed out, particularly in one city in Delft. So at the university campus, they ended up putting in a system just like this, just because they wanted to prioritize the heavy flow of bike traffic. The video here is around 30 seconds long. Let's watch it together.
Really uh, interesting little intersection that they put in on the TU Delft campus. They've actually had to add a traffic light because of the number of cyclists that are traveling through this particular cycle path. The light will stay green for the cyclists all the time and for pedestrians uh, crossing the street. If a car wants to cross the cycle track or the footpath, uh, they actually need to trigger a sensor in the street which will turn the light red for cyclists and turn the light green for cars, but only for about 10 or 15 seconds. So it's kind of a complete reversal of, of what we're used to seeing elsewhere in the world where the light will stay green for the cars and the, the, the pedestrians and cyclists have to uh, ask permission to cross the street. It is a complete reversal of what we're usually used to. So let me know what you guys think of the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please give me a like, a comment, and uh, do a subscribe. Till next time.